Mr. Cat, say hello. Come on, buddy. Yeah, this is why cats are stinky. No personality. All right, welcome back to the humble shop here in the fish cave. Welcome back to another episode of the world's worst fishing, where we play with colors and glitters, and today powders in our garage. So you can see I've got some swim bait molds, a little paintbrush, and some assorted powder pigments. Well, what are we gonna do with this? Let's talk about it. All right, everybody, so quick little introduction here. Um, again, thanks for being here and taking time out of your day to watch my video. Um, hope you will like and subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any uploads. All that uh, YouTube gibberish out of the way. Um, so today um, is gonna be, um, I, I think, an, an interesting challenge for me. I've not done this exact thing in quite some time but um, I wanted to do another kind of out there complicated swim bait pour. And about a year and a half ago on this channel, I introduced what's called the capsule method. Now it's, I wasn't the first person to do it, um, but I brought it to my channel a long time ago and kind of demonstrated um, my abilities with capsuling at the time. It's not a technique I do much anymore. I usually just hand pour everything. But today we're actually gonna combine skin pouring, which, uh, well, I'll just show you later. But we're gonna combine skin pouring with capsuling and brushing mica powders and, and other types of powders. Well, today, probably just mica powders. But dusting can be done with any powdered pigment. So today we're gonna be capsuling, skin pouring, and dusting. It's gonna be like almost a blue and gold perch is what I have in my mind. Um, I've done it once before and it was a challenge. So I said, well, I'll challenge myself again today. These baits are also going to be given away. So stay tuned for the end of this video to hear the details on how to win today's baits. All right, so the way I like to do this is I actually like to skin pour first. So we're gonna do our black stripes, which are going to be, um, of course, our uh, perch stripes. And the reason why I wanna skin pour them first is because I wanna build depth, okay, and layers. So doing it this way, I'll have my black layers down first, then a capsule behind that, a layer of clear plastic, then our brushed powders on the inside of that capsule, and then the colors in the body, the actual physical body of the bait that we're going to pour. So we're gonna have several different colors all working together, and that creates tremendous depth. I think that's really why you capsule, is, is to create the illusion of depth. And, and really it's not an illusion, there is depth there. So first things first, we just need some straight, simple skin pours for like a perch stripe. So something just like that. Just let it run down. Oop. And you can of course widen these. I'll just show you an example of that. So there's many different ways to skin pour. This is some of the more basic stuff. So let's say I want the top to, to be wider and then the bottom to it almost white like a triangle. I'll pour more at the top and then angle down okay so look at look at the difference in those two wider top up here that one's a skinnier top going more straight down so i actually kind of like the wider one so that's that's kind of how we're going to pour these i think that first one it always takes me a couple tries to get them exactly like i want so we're going to pour a little bit more up top then let it go down so you can see th that you can alter the shape of your striping just based on where where you pour right you can puddle it up top and then let it run down or you can just let it run down straight so anyway this is what we're doing so we're going to do quite a few of these stripes here okay all right looking good we'll do two more how about that come on As I go towards the back of the tail, obviously the tail tapers, so do my stripes. So I don't want my stripes to be as thick as the ones, right? I want them to kind of taper back. I think that makes for a really good natural hand pour. It makes it look like the bait maker really took his time and really did things right. Okay. So something like that. 
is kind of what we're going for. And just for since we're on video, I'll probably add another one, right? We'll bring this thing way back on the tail. Hey, we're not skimping out on you folks here. All right. So as you can see, we have even spacing and we have a nice tapering effect, both in thickness and of course in depth or, or uh, overall length, simply because the mold tapers. So I think as your mold tapers back, you want to taper back how your layers are poured. So that right there is what we're doing. Now I have to do it to all these other ones. Uh, fun, fun, fun. Um, but I enjoy this stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut the camera here. I'm going to pour the rest of these black stripes. Then we get to move on to our capsules. And then comes the really tedious part, brush and powders. Yeah, can y'all find the oddball out? Y'all see that right there? That's not going to fly. We got to redo that one. Let's see if we can do better. Let's see if we can do it here on camera. So much easier off camera. So much easier. Oh, too thick. All right, well, I'm going to get this thing off camera. All right, told y'all I'd get it. So we're getting to pour our cap, so we're just going to take some dead-on plastics to blend, right? Medium hard blend. And I want to get it really hot. That way it really flows over all those uh, ridges or stripes there really evenly and evenly covers the surface of the mold. If you were to try to pour a capsule really cold, it, it just it wouldn't thin out and, and flow evenly. So anyway, we're gonna nuke this stuff up to probably like 370, and then we're gonna show you um, what how we're gonna capsule. All right, so we've scooted over a little bit because you do usually kind of have some runoff, right? But basically, here's what we wanna do. We're just gonna start at the tail with this uh, tube blend here and just pour it down the bait. Let it really flow everywhere. All right, that's it. And then we can kind of dump some of the some of the remainder off. All right, so as you can see, now we have a clear layer of plastic down um, over our stripes. And um, you know, any run over like this you just pull it right off. You know, molds today are, you know, have pretty sharp edges. They actually have to be burred by hand um, from the mold. At least they better be doing that. So you have a, a nice kind of sharp edge there, and you can just kind of pinch, pinch off any, any overflow. So just kind of standard cleanup there for your molds. And then what I like to do is I like to go back with the heat gun and really melt this capsule layer down to try to even it out. You can see that little line there right we're gonna get rid of that and i'll show you how okay so we have all the molds capsuled now and like i was saying it's hard to get the plastic to just completely flow evenly right sometimes you have um spots like that where it kind of bunches up so basically what we're gonna do oh gotta plug my heat gun in hold on hold on we want to melt that layer okay so we're just gonna blast it with a heat gun. And you'll kind of see that lump there, that bump, that line, so to speak. You're gonna see it fade away. And it's gonna be a beautiful thing. Might take a second, let's get it close. Yeah, there we go, just like that. And that's just kind of how we can clean up, so to speak, our capsule. And that way you won't see that from the outside of the bait. All right, so uh, it's kind of raining outside, so hopefully there's not a whole lot of background noise there. Of course, I have one of my uh, fans running like usual, but now we're just gonna take some blue mica powder straight out of the out of the bottle there, right? Nothing crazy, and we're just gonna start painting it on, just like you would paint, I guess, right? Just like this. We'll get some close-ups here in just a second and basically I just want to basically paint a blue stripe I want to leave some room up top okay so I don't want my blue to go all the way to the top because the top layer is going to be a layer of black plastic and so I want the top layer of black plastic to fill in the gaps between uh, between my stripes so I don't want the blue to go much higher so we're just going to kind of do it in this kind of section right here, all right? Just like that. 
And what's cool is I'm gonna paint I'm gonna paint the blue powder behind the stripes. And in some cases, when you turn the bait certain ways, you can kind of see the powder behind the stripes, which just kind of adds to the whole depth thing. So it just kind of pays to go slow and steady here. Don't want to get in a hurry. You don't want your powder to go on the portions of the bait that you don't want it to go on. Okay, just like that. You know, not, not exactly trying to paint the Mona Lisa here or Rembrandt, you're just brushing on some powders. All right, and now we're gonna go with one of my favorite powders. I use it so often, just gold mica powder. And this is from good old Lure Works. That other stuff was some Hobby Lobby powder. And uh, it, it really kind of doesn't matter what you use, really. Um, any mica powder will work, and it will look really good. It'll, it'll be really vibrant. Um, it's just a good way to do things. So now, this bottom section, we're doing in gold. All right? I love the contrast of the blue and gold. This... Now, you could substitute these colors for, you know, green and, and some other things and make a more traditional perch color, but I figured we would do something a little bit different. Sorry about the glare, I'm trying to like, ugh, figure out what camera angle I should use. I don't know. Is that okay? I don't know. These molds kind of give off a lot of shine sometimes. And there's hardly anything you can do about it. So basically, everywhere below the blue, we're gonna fill in with this gold, all the way to the bottom even. You, you don't see a lot of the bottom belly color of plastic. At least not the way that I wanna do these. I'm sure you can alter that. You can of course accent the fin. You can just throw a little accent color up there. You know, brushing is a lot like hand pouring. It allows you to place color um, precisely where you want it. Little update report here. So we have our first one, obviously, that we did both the blue and gold in, all right? And you can see we've just done the blue and the others. So now we're gonna fill those in with the gold. And uh, then comes the next step. So bear with me, you cannot get in a hurry. This does take, uh, this does take a bit of time, especially when you're doing three molds. You know, because you have to do everything six times, just like, just like with some of my intricate pours. You might only see me post five baits, but I had to do that 10 times. So uh, you really cannot rush um, artful hand pours. So anyway, we will meet y'all back when we have them all completed. All right, this is the last one right here. So we're just gonna fill that gold in, blend it into that blue. Just, just go Bob Ross on it. Okay, we have all the dusting completed on all of the mold surfaces. Our Presto griddle is up to 350. And um, now what we need to do is heat up the plastic for our belly color, which is gonna be a stunning hyper shift here. This is ZGA. This is absolutely just an awesome kind of greenish hint um, color shift powder which I think will complement just the overall shininess of these very well because this is gonna be like a real bright, blingy type color. You know, hand pouring with just plastic, the color blending is a little more smooth, it's a little more subtle, this is gonna be like in your face. Um, the whole thing's gonna be like a perch mirror. So anyway, now we just need to put our hook slot inserts in, go ahead and close up these molds, and start getting them hot. Okay, ZGA time. Love that kind of shift effect. This stuff is just one of my favorites. It's a uh, pigment from Dip Your Car. I have an affiliate link in the description below. If you're a bait maker or any sort of powdered pigment enthusiast and you might want to try some of this stuff, that, uh, that does help support the channel. So any contributions there, any purchases you make, uh, I do appreciate. And uh, these are just awesome pigments to benefit any bait maker. So we're going to go ahead and mix those in. Just look at that. And I, I don't like to use much of, of my hyper shifts. I think you can oversaturate it. So you just kind of, especially a, a lighter one like this, you just kind of want it to look like a pearl. Yeah, look at that. 
Ugh. It can only be really, I think, uh, experienced properly in person, of course. But that is looking good. So I think we're gonna stop there. All right, so we're gonna pour these a little different than I normally do. I usually pour them pretty shallow just to the top of that hook slot insert. However, these, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna go till it flows down into the tail portion and kind of fills the tail up a little bit. So just kind of slow and steady. Let it flow all the way back and start filling up the tail, which it's doing now. Yeah. You can see that, see that tail start to fill up? And we're just gonna stop about right there. Okay, so something interesting just happened. I accidentally kind of over poured it. I, I poured too high. And so I actually had to dump the mold out so that the uh, belly color wasn't all the way up, like way too close to the top. And then I got to thinking, well, that's actually gonna leave a very thin, thin capsule of its own, right? Of this hyper shift on the insides of the walls where I poured it out from. So that might actually leave a little skin of, of this hyper shift powder that's gonna be over that black base. And maybe that'll look kind of neat. So I'm thinking what I might do is go with that and see if I can turn a mistake into something good, over pour them all, and then maybe have a cool little hyper shift effect or a color shift effect over that black. So basically fill it up, right? Oops, take it over here, just on any portion of the table and then dump it out. So I can literally just tip, golly folks, sorry, we're, we're, we're all discombobulated. And then pour it out some. It's where it's like at the right height, right? Just like that. All right, now we're gonna fill in the tops and hopefully do it right. So I have some black. It's not the same black that we poured our stripes with. This black is a little more watered down. I th so it's, there's not as much pigment in it. It's a little bit more see-through. All right, just like that. And you're actually, you actually don't need much because you, you pour the bellies higher on this one. So they fill up very quickly. So while the molds are cooling down, I wanted to show y'all kind of a sneak peek of an exciting project I'm working on. So uh, myself and Jetson Lure Eyes are going to be launching a sort of signature series world's worst fishing line of eyeballs and these are some samples these are sample pupils based off of eyeballs that either i have photographed myself or some designs that that i sent to john and some ideas that i sent to him and uh we have come up with some with some really great things i love the way that uh he kind of arranged the samples here these are all the same eyes but different backings so you have the pearl backings right then the chrome backings a little bit shinier and then the hologram backing is a little bit shinier and uh, so we're just kind of doing several different things these are hybrid striper eyes based off a photograph I took of some hybrid stripers these over here are gonna be uh, those are rainbow trout based several different colors of course but that's a rainbow trout pupil something that we worked on uh, let's see these I'm really happy with oop 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 those are tarpon eyes based off of what a tarpon eye looks like. So anyway, some really cool things. These are just the samples of just the fish eyes. There'll be some reptile eyes and some texture eyes on there too. So be on the lookout. We've got some exciting things coming with Jets and Lure Eyes. All right, here comes the big reveal. Do I have a video or was this all a waste of camera space? Here we go, drum roll please. Nice little double stroke roll. Let's see kind of what we got. Yeah. Hey, hey. Check it out. Pretty neat. Oh, I missed the spot. <laughs> All right. Let's take it out. Yeah. Isn't that something else? 
just how cool some of these effects can be. And you can see just how shiny it is. It's like a diamond, almost. You know? And, uh, I mean, there's so many other ways to, to technically do this. This is just one. Um, there's one right there. Or, I guess let me set it back down this way. Am I zoomed out? Ah, now I'm zoomed out. All right, let's get out another one. See how we did. Hopefully it's not bad. Oh yeah. What do y'all think? Is that not cool or what? Now, of course, you could just hand pour this. You could skin pour this, but it wouldn't have the same exact effect. If, if we look close, you can kind of see some of the depth to it, right? You, you can kind of tell that not all the color is placed on the exact outside of the bait. There's there's multiple kind of layers happening. I think that's what makes it so cool. All right, so now we need to select an eye, and I have a uh, sort of a, a book of Jetson eyes. These are mostly just kind of some samples and random things up here, but these are 10 millimeter eyes, so we kind of have some red eyes, some sort of green, we got some gold ones up top. You know, those baits have a lot of blue if you look at them over there, blue and black, so I think blue squid, the blue squid jets and eyes, I mean that, I mean come on folks, is that not going to match? Alright, there they are, super cool, you can see a lot of depth happening, you know, kind of brought the pattern all the way into the tail sections. Oop, why are we out of focus? Focus! Yeah, really awesome stuff y'all. Super fun technique to do. And uh, there's just kind of one idea. I love, <clears throat> love skin pouring stripes on a, lot of, on a lot of my hand pours. And this is kind of a way to incorporate that with some other methods, like the capsuling and dusting. So here's a, we'll get a close up of the heads there with the eyes. Looking good, looking good. And one more little glamour shot here. You might recognize this from the thumbnail. Got our eyes, our brush, and our powders. That is pretty much what you need. Very cool, yeah. Can y'all kind of see that green little color shift effect there over that black? It's barely there from when I over poured it. You can really see it in the tail portions really well. Super awesome, hope y'all enjoyed. Please let me know in the comments down below what you think. Okay, everybody, so I mentioned at the beginning that the baits uh, from today's video are going to be in a giveaway. And since they actually turned out really good, <clears throat> I think I can confidently give them away. So basically, uh, if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you've known that we've done giveaways in the past where I might give away um, some, some lures and baits that I made. I might give away some bait making materials. We've given away molds, plastic, colors, um, pretty much everything you need except your own shop. So uh, the swim baits that we just made in this video, thank you for watching by the way, I'm going to offer as a giveaway. So to enter the giveaway, you just need to leave a comment down below in the comment section that says shared and then copy this link, post it to your social media, post it to your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere that you can. I want a lot of people to see the video. Uh, I think it's a really fun technique. It's a super awesome way to make some, uh, you know, just very mind blowing effects and, and really awesome swim baits. And uh, you can also use this in other types of molds. You can do that in your injection molds. You can do it in any style of mold, really. It doesn't have to be a swim bait. Um, just swim baits are where kind of a lot of those techniques are really used the most. So comment down below, shared, share the video. We want to blow it up. We want to get a lot of views, trying to get subscribers and views up because that's the YouTube game. So. Um, Every subscription helps, and uh, thank you so much. Um, also, let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Did you like the bait? Did you not like the bait? Um, let me know. I'm, I'm all ears. So anyway, we're going to go inside and get ready for dinner. The sun is kind of just starting to set. It's a little cloudy and rainy. Not a nice evening out. But um, anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time on the world's worst fishing.